Hey everyone, <clears throat> it's 20 past 2 in the morning on the 22nd of September and it's been two weeks since I last put up a video so uh, I apologise for that I've been busy for one down at Mum's and this week I just have not felt myself I've been grumpy, I've been irritable I've been miserable I've had a meltdown. Ugh. It's been one of those weeks where I'm just wishing I could rewind it and start again. <laughs> anyway, the worst thing is I have no idea what put me in this sort of mood in the first place, but oh well. I'm feeling better. Apart from my nose, as you can tell, because I'm sniffing. No, I do not have a cold. It seems I've got my mum's sinus issue. She has problems with her sinuses. She has done since, I think she told me she was 28 when she was carrying my brother. Not my youngest brother. Because um, I've got two brothers, two younger brothers. So not the youngest, the next one. Next one down from me. Hello. Um Shut up, you stupid thing. Um, yeah. Narrow sinuses and allergies and things. And it seems like that's what I've had for most of this week. And it's driving me up the wall because I just feel like I've got a screwdriver wedged up each nostril. 24-7. <laughs> it's horrible. And it runs. I'm forever clearing bogeys out of my friggin' nose. It's, yeah. Not fun. But as always, with a lot of illnesses and th other ailments, they seem to get worse when you want to go to bed. <laughs> if you're in pain, the pain gets worse when you want to go to sleep. If you're feeling sick, you feel worse when you want to go to sleep. If you've got a cold, that gets worse when you want to go to sleep. I don't know why. I mean, your body heals itself, or so I was always told, it heals itself better when you're asleep. And resting, which is why they always say, rest when you're sick. Anyway, I've had an antihistamine, and I am feeling rather drowsy. I can, uh, I can see why they say do not operate, you know, machinery or drive a car after taking one of those pills. Jesus, man! I just want to go to bed already. It'll be great if I can just, you know, go out as soon as my head hits the pillow. Because so far this week, I've gone to bed. I've taken ages to fall asleep. What I do, I'm only asleep for an hour or two, then I'm wide awake and I don't want to go to sleep again. So the number of times this week I've actually come through to here and put the PC on at like 5 o'clock in the morning. Till 7 o'clock when I sort of start feeling drowsy again, then I go back to bed for a couple of hours. So I think I've only had like probably about 4 hours tops of sleep each night. Which could be partially to blame for my um, moodiness this week. Anyway, I was wandering aimless around the If you can, <coughs> excuse me, if you can hear rattling when I walk, it's because my uh, my belt is undone. Um, I've got a rather large, irritating patch of psoriasis right on my waistline, right where the belt buckle likes to dig in and whatnot, which after a time, especially when I've been wearing jeans all day or whatever, it starts to annoy my psoriasis there, so I've just undone the belt just to relieve it a little bit. Right, I do have some updates for you. I do have a new daily driver, the Intel i3 motherboard I can't remember who it's made by but I'll go into details on another video that I wanted to use along with the SSD and everything else it's all in this case and I've got my friend Brandon to thank for that he got me the case because that is what was holding me back from building it I didn't want to put it into a case only to change everything and put it into another case later on I just wanted it in a nice case like this so it's done and dusted then 
if I want to upgrade anything, I can. Because I've got no intentions, you know, of uh, getting rid of the case. But like I said, I will go into this in details in a separate video with everything it's running um, and whatnot. But uh, if you're just curious and you want to look up the case, it's an NZXT Phantom 530. And um, these NZXT cases are not actually cheap. I was looking on eBay, they're quite pricey brand new. But uh, nice case, I like it. And he's just gone and got himself a nice case, another black and white one. I don't think it's NZXT though, I think it's a Zalman, if I remember correctly. So, that's upcoming. Um, as far as down at Mums go, we've made a lot of progress on the pond and the model railway room. If you remember the last video I did on those, which was over two weeks ago now, the pond was just a hole in the ground that had been dug and the model railway room was literally just the floor with a tarp over it and one end wall. Well, uh, we've made a lot of progress. Let's just say construction wise for the model railway room, aside from tidying up a few bits, it's just the ceiling and insulation on the inside to go and the lights and that is it. Um, I've got his fuse box in I've got all his power outlets installed where he wanted them. So they're all live, they're all ready to use. He's actually using them now <laughs> instead of a... I temporarily rigged up an extension socket to the mains cable that was coming in. Um, so we had power in there to run the temporary lights because I've got like um, a, what I call a party festoon lights that take ordinary... Well, these basically, I've got a string of those with um, obviously brighter bulbs and coloured ones. Got some halogen bulbs in there and a couple of LED bulbs um, for temporary lighting, which it's still running the temporary lights because like I said, I can't put the main lights in. I've still got a length of cable to run to the last light because um, the spotlights I've got in the bedroom, I bought two of those, didn't I? I put one up in mum's kitchen the one that I didn't use here and then she found some others at a yard sale that she preferred so I swapped those and had the other ones spare you know that are identical to the ones I've got here so I'm sticking those up in the model railway room they're going right up in the middle but because it's a long room I'm going to put a baton light fit in at each end with a nice bright LED light bulb in that should give him enough room enough room enough light to see what he's doing but the only lights in there that actually do work from the light switch at the minute are his work lights above his table. There's a couple of spotlights. Although I did make a boo-boo. <laughs> I put the switch on upside down. You see, when you look at a light switch over here, you see, that position is on, and obviously when I flick it, the other position is off. See? Well, I turned, I put the switch on accidentally up the other way. So this position, position was off. Um, what I'd done, when I was terminating the wires, I had to turn the switch around so I could get to the screws. But I forgot to turn it back before I screwed it to the wall. <laughs> so what I had to do is take the two screws out, turn the switch around and put the screws back in. Yeah, I had a bit of a, a dumb moment. I thought to myself, you know, when I was doing it, I had to turn the switch back around before I put it on the wall and I just plainly forgot to do it. It's not a problem. You can use it whatever way up you want, but that was just going to drive my OCD nuts if I didn't turn it around. So, we're getting there. I just want to see him get his benches in there and then start laying out his model railway. Because I actually enjoyed watching the trains go around the track when he had it... Uh, not the last address they were at, the one before that. So, uh, I'm getting quite eager. I've got the metal fencing is still up. We've just had a couple of days of high winds. Not as bad as they've had over in Wales and Ireland, though. And I believe Scotland. I can't remember because I don't really follow news that much these days. It just pisses me off, so I don't bother. 
and it depresses me as well sometimes so I just don't bother or try not to pay any attention to it uh, right now let's come back through here we'll go back this we'll just walk around the flat randomly shall we <laughs> um, it's looking a little untidy now I've got a few bits of rubbish to pick up but as you can see it's a lot better than it was I've had a huge clean up in here I'm getting rid of that Dyson Hoover I had because I found out there's a more broken on it than I first thought. So it works fine as an upright, you know, just to vacuum over your floor. But when you take the, the pipe attachment off, it falls to bits. It's not usable. Which um, I didn't know about. And I know Brandon didn't know about that either. So it's just one of them things. Still usable. You can still use the... Um, pipe extension is just I don't know I just found it really really bloody awkward and horrible to use especially as when I pulled on the pipe the whole thing came off the hoover anyway <laughs> so I thought nah I'll just get rid of it I'll stick with my old faithful Henry for now although he didn't sound too good the other day but I think my um my transformer might be on the blink to be honest makes a hell of a lot of noise yeah takes a 110 transformer and I've had a clean up on here as well and I've got my shelf in there um, there's some of this board there that neither my stepdad or my brother wanted to use so he cut a piece out of that for me it's about time I've had that framework on there for months I'm so glad I did that because it's allowed me to move a lot of my overflow of Lego models and whatnot because I had a load stored on the end here and I've cleared that bench and yeah I've been doing a heck of a lot I'm getting there slowly with their tidying this flat up all I really need to do is just get in the kitchen give that a good clean yeah I've got some cat sick on the floor I'll clear up as well and uh, clean the bathroom and then that's pretty much my flat to a respectable level I think you know I'm not a perfectionist so I don't want this absolutely spotlessly perfect you know <laughs> anyway my friend Brandon came over a couple of nights ago and uh, we targeted the bedroom and got this cleared up not that you'd notice because I've got a couple of bags down there one of these bags and I don't know which one it is without looking but I've got to take one to mum's there's a bag of bags there I've got to take to mum's because she's always after carrier bags. I seem to be the only one that's not tight fisted enough not to pay for carrier bags. Mum won't pay the 5p, I think another bloody 5p. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, we've uh, had a bit of a clean up in here. And he targeted this area. Now, I actually love what he's done. I think he's done an awesome job at tidying this up he's made a bit of room in this gap you know here with this gap there um, although my idea was to move the blue lights there and put the radios along there and I said put that on there because well there's nowhere else to put it at the minute so that's not staying there because I really do not like it there I need to find somewhere else to shove it up my own ring piece I think at the rate I'm going <laughs> And he actually said, would you consider yourself a hoarder? And uh, I can't deny it really, can I? In a sense, I am, because I've got so much stuff that's, in reality, of no use to anyone. It's just stuff I've collected, but it could be worse, because it could be to the point, you know, where I can't move in this flat. And... A lot of stuff I keep for so long before I, I either get bored with it and get rid of it for something else. Or I just get bored with it and just get rid of it. <laughs> but yeah, he's done a good job, you know. He's put my little portable radios over there, my two band ones and the portable tape player and Barclay card radio computers. The only thing I really want to sort out because I'm really not happy with is the placement of these records and cassette tapes and CDs now but what I've decided to do um, 
as if my stepdad's got any more board left over is to cut them into like four divisions just four panels that will fit let me just turn this around there we go so I can see my screen you know that would fit under there so it'd be one there and one there and then another one a little bit further up and then I'll just have the legs up there to support all that bit um, which will add support to this because there's a big gap there and I have noticed it's not bowing that much but there is a very slight bow in it from the weight um, plus if I put a, you know a division in here I've got somewhere to put the records at least but I want something on the top there to put my tape decks you know like a cabinet like this maybe I could get my stepdad just to make something up because it wouldn't be hard now you could make something like this up out of scrap wood and I can paint it black that's not a problem you know and then sit it on here just something that would look nice rather than just tapes randomly stacked on there that's what I'm thinking of uh, and for some reason my controller for my LED sign has gone down the back again I've got a habit of doing that yeah um, also I've gotten back into collecting die cast cars particularly matchbox They're, that's going to be my main target to collect old matchbox cars I'm not really interested in the new ones I just want them from at least the 1960s up until the 1980s. That seems to be my favourite three decades anyway. Um, I will continue to collect others like Corgi and Hot Wheels and Majorette. I absolutely love my Majorette as well. If I see Majorettes anywhere I wouldn't be able to resist them. Um, but I want some more at some point. Carry cases like this which I've actually found out I can pick up pretty cheap on eBay. I love cars so just so I've got something like that to put in the cars that are either in good condition such as this one here it's not mint because it has got chip in the paintwork right there above that wheel but it is in good condition I don't want it to get any worse so that is why I would want some of these carry cases same with this 57 Chevy which I've got a big thing for as well. I've got a couple in Hot Wheels too. And I've got one in Hot Wheels up on the shelf there, which is boxed. I actually bought this one the other day, but I don't think it's a 57 Chevy. Actually, I know it's not a 57 Chevy. I think it might be a 55, hence the 55 on it. Because it's got... Ah! This is most likely a 55 Chevy. Because if you look, it's got the number 55... Oh, it's not on that one. It's on this side, though. C55 with the Chevy badge. Oh, it is on this side, but it's just further back on the rear fender. Can you see that? It's right there. Ah. I do like my 50s American cars, but I'm not good at naming them. So if, any, if I'm wrong, then feel free to correct me on that one. Um... One of the things I will be after is emergency vehicles. You know, big time. I've got several of these various Majorette. That's the era of Majorette I'd like to collect with that little slot in the bottom. And I think that was something to do with the packaging because I used to lock on the packaging base. I presume that's what the slot's for. So, yeah. And I want to have a go at restoring some like this one. Um, I don't have the equipment here to do it. See, that one wouldn't be hard to restore. The wheels are in good condition. It would basically just be dismantle it, paint it, put it back together again. You know, there's no glass windows to put in or anything like that. Um, it's not that complicated to do. You just drill out that rivet to take that base off. Um, then use this guy I watch on YouTube uses like a little Dremel tool with a sanding disc on it to um, sand off the 
the deformed part on those axles so you can take the wheels off and the same for the pin for the tipper bed and a uh, bit of a paint stripper strip the paint off dry it obviously and uh, primer it paint it put it all back together again and this dude I watch he's made a um, modified a nail and put it in a drill press so he can deform the axles again to hold the wheels on because that's all it is it's just a metal pin with them um, one end deformed one end is nicely rounded and the other end is deformed in the factory so the wheels don't fall off very easy way to do it <laughs> but uh, the bedford tk here is one of my favorite trucks and this is one of two that I've got. I don't know where the other one is. I had to fix the other one because the uh, tailgate on the tipper fell off. But I would have thought it would have been put up here with the others. Oh, look what Brandon got me the other day. But it's a bit long for this shelf. The card, the backing card is a bit long. So it would look odd if I hung it up on here. That's the third DeLorean I've got. I've got the actual Hot Wheels Back to the Future DeLorean. I've also got somewhere, is it on here? Yes it is, the Ghostbusters Ecto-1. And I've got the original Batmobile that they did as well. <laughs> oh yeah, and the other Bedford TK truck is on here. No it hasn't, there it is. See, it's got slightly darker red tip bed than the other one. But the actual main body is exactly the same colour. But a lot of these manufacturers did that. They did variations because um, they do one design for a year. And if they're going to keep, like, say, the Bedford TK next year, they'll change something on it, like the colour of the bed or the colour of the chassis or something like that. Different colour windows in it. So you end up over the years with all these different variations. Different countries will have different variations of the same models as well. So you really do end up with loads of these different variations of the same vehicle. <laughs> anyway. <sighs> I think that's it. I think I'm going to shut down the PC. I'm going to yawn. I do love having an SSD now because it's so quick to boot now. Um, but I have noticed... I'm going to show you the lights. Look. See, that'll turn off. Everything will go off. Everything will go off. Eventually. Dear. Like that. Apart from power to the USB sockets. Same with that. It's USB mouse. I'm not going to press the buttons because I'll turn it on again. But I've also noticed that if, this is a PS2 keyboard, by the way, it's not USB. But I'm going to try it with a USB one just to see if my theory is correct. Because if I press. Well, actually, let me just do it anyway. You ready? Actually, so if I get it all in shot, you ready? Press a key on the keyboard, it turns on again. It's alright, I'll shut it down, it's not going to hurt it. It's not like I've got to wait, you know, hours for the damn thing to boot. So, I'm actually wondering if the rear I.O. for the PS2 and USBs is deliberately powered up like that for this feature to work. Possibly. Can't see any other reason why it would be like that. But, uh, I do like it because sometimes if I don't feel like hitting the power button on the actual case, I can just thump the keyboard. <laughs> right, but this PC is going to hate me now because I'm now going to power it down again. There we go. My PC is going to be thinking, will you make up your friggin' mind? But yeah, I just thought that was quite an interesting... Um, I'm presuming it's a feature. Which must be operated in the BIOS. 
you know, turned on in the BIOS or turned off. I've not even entered the BIOS on this, so I have no idea, I don't even know what it looks like. <laughs> Perhaps we can do that in the next video. Right. I want to go to bed and Nemo's going to hate me because I'm going to have to budge him off the bed. He knows my feet go where he's laying and he goes this side of the bed. Cheeky booger. Right. Thanks a lot for watching everyone. So uh, I guess I'll talk to you all in the next video. Bye-bye.